Welcome to Northlandia, a place to bring your curiosity, because here you'll find curiosities. I'm Wyatt Buckner of the Duluth News Tribune, and I will be your guide as we discover the unique and fascinating stories here in the Northland. Here we celebrate the region's distinctive people, places, and history. In this episode, we look into the origins and tales behind some of the Northland's unique statues. Let's venture forth into Northlandia. Here to tell us about these Northland statues, I'm joined once again by reporter Terry Caddo. Terry, welcome to episode 23 Woo. of the Northlandia podcast. Yeah, we're getting up there. Thank you for having me here. I'm glad to be back again. So Terry, I know this is a story you've been kind of working on for a little bit now. I know we've talked about it off and on in some of the Northlandia meetings we've had. But what inspired you slash motivated you to even want to pursue this undertaking in the first place? Because there's a lot of weird statues out there in our area. There are a lot of weird statues in the this region in general, and I have had a lot of fun visiting a lot of them. I think my my personal so this comes from kind of a personal love of mine. Like I started going around and taking photos with statues and taking photos of our interesting statues in the region starting in 2020, which is a weird year to start anything, but it's one of those few things that you could do safely. Like you could avoid mm-hmm. people and go stand and look at a statue and take a photo with it. It wasn't... Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it was something you could easily do. So I traveled to a couple of different places, both in our in our Northlandia region and also outside of it. I went as far as like Bemidji and, and such like that and had fun looking at all the weird and interesting statues. So when there was the idea of doing a, a tour, kind of a, a run through and looking at stories of our own statues i was like yeah that's 100 percent my 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 niche that's something i'm very much into so Mm -hmm. do you have a guesstimate of like how many trips you made during that time period 2020 i only took a couple in 2021 i took two or three because i three or maybe three or four i'm not sure (laughs) uh quite a few because again it was one of those years where there wasn't as much happening in person so it, it was something to do something just take a weekend go find a fun statue or sculpture garden and go walk around it for a while because it's something you can do easily i wonder how many other people had a similar mindset and tried something something similar there were definitely people out and out about doing that i don't know (laughs) if they were maybe the same but yeah definitely people were at the sculpture gardens i visited and it was a it was a fun time now you only wrote about a few of the statues in our region i uh, I know we had our landing meetings there was so many different options the last meeting we had we just were rattling off like at least like a dozen or so of like over that this one or that one should we only do animals should we do non-animals like there was just trying to think of the qualifying factors of how you should narrow down the scope of your article because if you were to do every right. single one it'd be way it would just more... be a list it wouldn't be any information about it it wouldn't mm-hmm. be anything about what makes it interesting it would just be literally like oh here's a statue oh here's another statue oh what about that statue that's it that yeah but i was like well i want to dive into these i want to know more about mm-hmm. these and i think people do too because you look at statues all the time and you wonder yourself like okay how did this get here though why is this here why is it this shape why is it this animal or person or being and i personally always want to know more and sometimes you get information and there's a little stand and it tells you about it but a lot of times you're just kind of left going okay well i guess they just want to put a big fish there cool (laughs) great so how did you go about narrowing the focus of which of those statues to do I narrowed it down to the ones where I could find people to talk to me about them. That was really, <laughs> that was really what it was. Is I, I started reaching out to people, and as I started gathering stories, I was like, oh, these stories flow nicely together. They, they fit. They have c- similar kind of themes of like surprisingly contention was one of the themes. I did not expect that going into this, but like people disagreeing about how statues should look, about what should be the, where, whether or not you're allowed to have a statue on a certain piece of property or not. That was definitely a kind of a theme I was finding, and or also just people having fun with it and i found that people are really willing to talk to you about their stat their interesting statue in their town or whatever uh mm-hmm. in fact i i have some answers that keep coming in so i finished the story early sunday morning and now on monday and tuesday i've already gotten a couple of emails being like oh if you want to know more about our set you know so i think there's grounds to do another round of this sometime in the future but these are the ones i got stories for for right now and the ones that i thought were very interesting stories mm-hmm so if you want to hear about more statues, bring forward your ideas and your contact info with people who has information. Yeah. That's the that's key part of this. That's the key part. If you know <laughs> someone who, who's willing to talk to me about it, I am very happy to listen. Mm-hmm. So obviously there were many that didn't make the cut and you said the qualifying reason ended up being about who you could get information from, uh, who are able to get back to you in, in time. Uh, but before we get into the stories behind the ones you focused on in your article, what were some of the ones that didn't quite make the cut? So I had brought up the idea of doing the one 
uh, in East Duluth, Catsby, which is a, a cat that, it was a real life cat that unfortunately passed away. Uh, I believe it may have gotten run over. It's kind of a sad story. Oh. It was kind of a, a mascot, unofficial, of course, mascot for a lot of the, the high school students at East. And so they had a statue made in its honor. And so it's the great Catsby statue. It's right by the lake walk. I wanted to get into that, but I didn't dive into it right at this moment. I think... Jay had, our, our co-worker Jay had expressed interest in diving into the Iron Man up in Mountain Iron. And I, I was like, well, that's fine. Go for it. You you take that one. That's great. So that's why that one's not there. We just had a great piece about the loon last year, the floating loon statue up in Virginia. Yep. I went to that one. Uh, well, I went to, because uh, the yeah. story for that one was they went to the state fair. Exactly. So I got to go down there and watch them actually unload that into yeah. the garden. That was, a, that was a whole process. Go check out that story. Yeah. So, I mean, that's what I mean is I was like, okay, not doing the ones that we've like kind of covered already or the ones that people want to cover in the future. I probably could have included the hockey stick and puck, but I was already at like a thousand plus words and I was like, oh, no, no, no. okay, <laughs> not right now. That's fairly well known too. Yeah, at least that's time. pretty well. well known enough. Yeah. And then uh, there's a bunch of other little ones or ones that were not quite, they were kind of in our region, kind of not like the uh, Smokey the Bear statue up in International Falls. That's not quite our cover, you know, but kind of is, but kind of isn't. That one I kind of wanted to get into mostly because I heard that they had prohibited people from putting clothes on him a couple of years ago. They're like, Smokey the Bear is not supposed to be wearing clothes. Like he's supposed to... (laughs) So <laughs> that was an interesting story. And I was like, oh, I kind of want to get into that. But I, I didn't end up having time to chase that one. But uh, yeah, that's an interesting one. And there's a nice little dragon down in Crosby that mm-hmm. I kind of wanted to get into. Like, wh- why? Why a dragon? I mean, it's pretty. I love it. It's very, very cool. But I just kind of want to know. I want to know more about it. Oh, and then uh, a big one, too, was up in Virginia. Um, there's a great one of a, a Sawyer, a, a guy who works for a sawmill. Mm-hmm. And uh in Roadside America, this is not the official name of this statue, but they, they have it labeled as Sawed Off Sawyer because it, it just has the guy's torso and, and head and then the big sawmill blade. Um, and so it kind of looks like he maybe there was some sort of an accident. It's not what it's meant to be, but that's what mm. like it's been interpreted as. And I'm like, okay, well, what was it meant to be? And I wanted to get more into that. But again, didn't hear back from some folks and that's all right. Mm-hmm. Things for the future. Yeah. The dragon would have been kind of cool to see. The what one? The, the dragon one. Oh, kind of cool it is see. pretty neat. I can show you a photo after. Oh, I've, yeah, I've been to too. that one. And I know eventually down the up the North Shore, if you remember a uh, previous story of Northlandia yes. uh, with the metal sculptures. Uh, the dinosaurs. Dave Estrada, you have the dinosaurs. He's working on a, eventually he wants to build a dragon. <gasps> and that would be really cool. Nice. Want, I would and, love another dragon in the area. Yep, and that's like metal and then like, like it moves so it could Ooh. flap in the wind. So that would be pretty cool and to watch out for up the North Shore eventually. Putting the pressure on Dave a little bit. <laughs> that was another one I kind of wanted to do. I wanted to do this one in Wisconsin that's uh, I haven't seen it in myself I haven't actually like look, gone and looked for this one but I heard about a big wolf statue made out of recycled materials um up by I want to say up by Bayfield and I was like oh that's super cool and I reached out to the the company that's supposed to be nearby it and didn't hear back from them but I mean that that sounds pretty neat and it's supposed to move it's supposed to be a mechanical wolf thing that moves Mm-hmm. a little bit it looks like it's howling so yeah there's there's a lot out there i mean you can go and do mm-hmm. your own miniature statue tour that's what i i like to do i i do that and pick a, i pick a place and i go and look around at different places that are in the area roadside america and atlas obscura are your great guides to finding <laughs> interesting statues wherever you're traveling pretty much in the u.s or even out of the country mm-hmm. or experiments in uh, uh the marcel experimental force that's how we oh, found yeah. the spruce project oh that's how you found it <laughs> that's how that's how jay found it. he says like in atlas obscura oh, atlas obscura okay mm-hmm. Yeah, I also really... Oh, Roadside America kind of looks older style, but it is super fun to kind of look through all the kind of weird stuff it has up up mm-hmm. there. It's really fun. Yeah, so now moving on from the ones that we that didn't actually make it into the article, didn't let's now transition one. to what you actually did write about. Because it could be... We could do a whole sub-series on like weird statues. Uh, I'm willing to... <laughs> like I said, I will do another round if people get... if. Mm-hmm. You Super heard it, folks. Willing. So uh, put your interest forward, and it will be heard. Oh God, I'm uh, gonna get like five emails. No. <laughs> but going down the, the list here, let's start with as you have it written in your article, the thrice stolen iconic Weldon's rooster. Yeah. So this is one that I'm very familiar with because I used to have to drive back and forth between Duluth and Two Harbors, and so as you're going into Two Two Harbors, uh, you'll see on your left side of the road a uh, eight foot tall rooster in front of a, a gift shop called Weldon's. And uh, I called up 
this is the one of the first one that I wanted to I, that I reached out to anyone to to cover, and I, I called a woman intending to leave a message, and she she answered her phone at eight o'clock at night, which I appreciated, but also I felt a little bit bad. And she told me, oh yeah, that was a that's been with us for since 1965, and her parents had to open up that store. Her father is the Weldon of Weldon's Gifts in 1963, and it's been there ever since, except for the three times that it got stolen by other people. So what's the story there? Like, I, who I stole it do... and why and how long were they stolen for? We don't know the who in a lot of the cases just because they got found someplace. Mm. It, it got dumped and so they just kind of picked it up and they're like, well, there you go. She kind of asserted to me that mm, in one of the cases that maybe police knew more than they showed uh, that they shared with her. <laughs> I don't know here or there whether that's true, but basically it's been stolen three times and three times it's been found twice in Duluth and once in just like a culvert. Up, up the shore all the times people just with flatbread trucks designed to or you know people with pickup trucks designed to pick it up i, I assume a few people like i don't think you could just lift that on your own but mm-hmm. yeah just how big is it eight foot tall i just why would you go through all the effort yeah. of stealing that and then just dump it somewhere that just seems i think because they didn't want to get caught with it because i mean we're also also where are you gonna hide that I mean, fair. But. I mean, to be fair, she, the people who, who have stolen it could have taken a lesson from Honk the Moose. We'll get to that. Because <laughs> they managed to steal, quote unquote, steal that one and uh, keep it hidden while they, they held it for ransom. Anyway. <laughs> I'm coming up to that one. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. And then moving on to the next one, various Voyagers. Yeah. So that I know of. There are six Voyager statues in our region alone. And uh, that includes two that I, I talk about in this story, which are uh, Pierre, who is nicknamed the Pantsless Voyager because he doesn't look like he's wearing any kind of pants and he's got the long boots. And <laughs> then there's, and he's just outside of two harbors. So he's another one who I drove past pretty much every day for two, three years there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the other one that we talk about is, uh, or that I get into is, ah, actually two of them. All right. This was a case where a, a man got into a land dispute with the uh, U.S. National Parks because they were, they were forming Voyagers National Park, and he uh, disagreed with them about buying up a lot of the land up there. So he purchased an island, and he had a statue version of himself as a Voyager placed on that island as a protest of them doing this. They were less than pleased about it. <laughs> uh, they seized the statue oh. and, and the island. Uh, eventually, I believe he, he ended up either winning or settling in his, his suit with the Forest Service, but not before he uh, had, a, had created, or I'm not sorry, not Forest Service. National Park National people. Park, yeah. Not before he had created a second identical statue, which he had placed <laughs> just outside of the, Vo- the Voyagers National Park Visitor Center. So not a case of a stolen one this time, but a seized one. So that was seized. Uh, and then uh, this is kind of the land dispute one, you know, mm-hmm. when I, I mentioned in the, in the headline. So that one, so the first one is Big Vic. The second one is Big Louie. Eventually things calmed down. And so the guy, the guy took Big Louie and sold it to a restaurant in Barnum where he still stands facing the highway. So as you go down I-35, you can see him. Oh, that's that one? Barnum. Yeah, that's the one. Oh, wow. That's Big Louie. I never knew anything about that one. About I him, know, exactly. That's literally like... I'm too familiar with that statue. (laughs) That's that one. And then the other one, uh, which looks identical to that one, is up in Rainier, which the Forest Service, that was the one that they had seized, and they donated it then to the city. Mm, Yeah. familiar with that one as well. Not as well. I don't go up there that often. Still. Yeah. So they are the the, basically the same statue. That was a fascinating one to hear about. Uh, I won't lie. I I got inspiration. I didn't know the backstory of that one until I talked to the person who was my source for the next door, next uh, statue that we talk about, Mike Schultz. He had mentioned that to me and I'm like, oh, I need to dig into this because that's fascinating. (laughs) So speaking of, now yeah. we move on to the next one, the the once white stag of Renshaw. Now yeah. there, I've already heard a little bit of the whispers of the story behind this one in our uh, Northlandia chat. Yeah. Uh, so give me the give me the deets. Basically, from uh, I believe 2010 to 2011 ish, g- give or take a month or so in here or there, from like July to July, the the stag in Renshaw was painted white. It was painted white by the uh, 
Free Range Film Festival to promote. They had a film about like small towns that created world's best or not world's best, world's biggest items like world's biggest pig or whatever, you know, statues of the Mm -hmm. world's biggest whatever as a way to kind of promote tourism and get people to come to their towns. So since they were showing that show, they thought, well, let's do something kind of like that. We've got this giant deer statue in Renshaw. So the statue was already there, but it didn't really look, it was just a brown deer statue. So they they asked the city council, could we get your permission to, to paint it white? And the city council as Mike Schultz said, surprisingly said yes. Uh, and so they, they went ahead and did that and they kept it painted and uh, the festival went on and came and went and it went really well. And then there was some disagreement about who was going to be then responsible for turning it back if it was going to be turned back. Mike said that they had said, oh, you can turn it back if you don't like it. The, apparently the council had thought that they were going to, the film festival was going to change it back if they said that they didn't like it. So that ended up being like a thing. They got dragged back, well, not brought back before council. I take council. it they didn't like it. Yeah. <laughs> they got complaints about it. They got, apparently people had complained about it, which is funny because Mike just heard a lot of people saying how much they liked it. It was just a dis- whole disagreement. No one's ever entirely happy. There's always somebody displeased. There's always somebody who's not going to like a thing. There's maybe some people who didn't like the deer being there and, at all anyway. Mm-hmm. But he talked about how um, a popular thing that people would do at the time, because Harry Potter was still kind of a thing in 2010, 2011. Mm. Some people would take their wands and they would take photos of themselves <laughs> holding a wand because the white stag is like Harry Potter's yeah, yeah. Yeah, Patronus. Mm-hmm. So that For was those thing. who know. <laughs> yeah. That was the thing to do back in the day. Um, so yeah, he, he thought it was kind of popular. People kind of liked it. Eh, some people didn't and so he he had this idea of like oh we'll do a campaign we'll do it as a fundraiser so that way we have the funds to change it back to brown if people want to do that and so people could buy buttons to vote whether they wanted it brown or white and then he found out that the council had asked somebody to go and paint it back to brown and it was already done undermine the entire dem- democratic system <laughs> i mean it's not really a democratic system unofficial if you have to pay democratic to system if you have to pay to vote it's not the most <laughs> But, I mean, that's fair. <laughs> but like I said, it was a fundraiser. That was the idea is that would be the funds then to, to pay for the paint and it would be a thing. But mm-hmm. it was already over. I, I'm assuming they returned the funds. Oh, uh, they didn't get started on it. They, oh, they, they, were, they got as far as designing the buttons. Oh, okay. And then gotcha, they found gotcha. out they that it was pre- not an end. So they're like, okay, fine. Pre-revenue on that one. Pre-revenue, yeah. So it was not a scandal. It was just like, oh, we're going to do this. Oh, never mind. No, I assume they just gave it back if it was no. past that point. But It wasn't past the point. It was like, all right, we're going to do this. And they're like, no, we're done. It's done. Okay. <laughs> just suddenly just wanted to just wipe their hands clean of it and just be done. <laughs> yeah. So that's uh, that's kind of that deal. I think there'd be so much drama over a single statue in Renshaw. I mean, yep. And then lastly here, uh, you've alluded to it before, we have A Tale of Two Moose. Yeah. So first of all, there are two identical moose statues. Well, nearly identical. I'm assuming maybe there's a little bits and pieces, but they're both statues that are made by Fast, which is the fiberglass animal shapes and trademarks company based in Sparta, Wisconsin, also known as Fast. Uh, I didn't know this. I actually thought that Honk the moose up in Biwabic was older, but it turns out the Moose Lake Moose is older than Honk the Moose. So he is hmm. the preliminary statue there. He was acquired by a gentleman who uh, really wanted to uh, add a moose to Moose Lake. He thought Moose Lake should have a moose statue. That's just, you know, it goes with the name. And it was the the, the city's centennial that year. So he and uh, two other folks worked together to purchase a moose statue. They did buy it. <laughs> Okay, so they'd gone to Fast, and they said, hey, we're, we'd like to do a moose statue. They're like, oh, we do have this one that we're working on right here. And he, he said, oh, but it's dedicated to, it's, it's set to go to this other city. Somehow it ended up going to Moose Lake. Hmm. His son, who I talked to about this, said his dad was a big wheeler and dealer and was really good at negotiating. So he thinks he, uh, he, he somehow convinced him to let, let, it, let, let it go to Moose Lake instead. <laughs> <laughs> that seems sneaky. Uh, a little bit. But I, I, I enjoy the story. He said it, it was his father's, one of his like proudest accomplishments for the city. So <laughs> I'll give him that. And then there's the good old Honk the Moose, which uh, I'm from Gilbert. So Biwabic is pretty close. I, I went there all the time for dance lessons as a kid and would see Honk the Moose in the park. Uh, and this one, there is a storybook that's written about this moose. So there's kind of details and it uses a lot of names uh, that were real life people around at the time because this happened in like 1915 where a moose came out from the woods and spent a lot of this the winter in a um barn in town Mm -hmm. and it became kind of a symbol for the city so uh they wanted to actually build a statue version of honk and they did that in 2000 so the the first the moose lake statue was in 1989 this was in like 1999 2000 era but he did once get stolen 
And uh, you can read more about that in the story. I, I say stolen. Uh, it was stolen by the mayor. <laughs> wait, wait. And brought okay, in for ca- repairs. Okay, you can't just not explain that. What, nope. what do you mean? What do you have mean? to read the story. Ah. <laughs> uh. All right, guys, you have, now you have to go to the website. I mean, I've told you basically the whole story of a <laughs> yeah. lot of these. So That's fair. we got to leave something for the article. <laughs> it's pretty great, though. It's a pretty fun story. Speaking of fast, that was one of the commonalities I found between pretty much all of these statues. The only one that I, I found of the ones I included in this story that wasn't a fast statue was the Weldon's rooster because she doesn't know where that came from. Um, that one was just on a truck with a bunch of other animal statues that just pulled up their business one day and was like, do you want any of these? So she doesn't know where that one came from. Uh, but otherwise, all the rest of them were, were created by Fast. And the fascinating fact about Fast is that uh, if you go there to Sparta, Wisconsin, and I have done this, they have a mold graveyard in the back of their building that you can just walk around and see like the, the molds that made all of these fiberglass statues that you see around. Mm-hmm. And it's really... It's a really fun time to just kind of go around and see. Now, they're not all in like fully intact shape. So you see like bits and pieces of bits and pieces, but it's uh, it's pretty fun. I I love that they call it a graveyard. It's the mold graveyard. And you kind of look around and see what these shapes look like that make all these fun statues. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit outside of Northlandia, but it's pretty fun. Yeah. So why do you think it's worth knowing these stories behind the statues beyond just general intrigue? Or is it just general intrigue? I mean, I think a big thing is statues are, even if they're just like an eight foot tall one, like the rooster, they're landmarks. It takes a lot to put a statue up. Like these things don't happen overnight. This is something that's built. This is something that's planned. This is something that people took the time and either worked in a committee or individually decided to put into a place. And it takes a lot of to get that to come to fruition. And so I feel like it's an important to know, okay, but why? Why is this here? Why is this, you know, what does this mean for our community to have this statue? In some cases, it's just, it's a thing that that's there. And if it's not, also, like I would say, if you don't know the history behind it, if you don't know the things that make up it, it's very easy to ignore it, to just, Mm -hmm. it becomes part of the landscape that you don't, that you just drive by every day, you don't notice it. And that can lead to it becoming neglected. And that, that's kind of sad. So Mm -hmm. I feel like if more people know about them, the more they get to care about it, the more they get to feel connected to their community because of it gotcha well terry i think we'll wrap it up there thanks so much for joining us and hopefully we get enough interest back to, to do follow-up and uh further down dive into the treasure trove that is uh northland statues yeah. there are there are many 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 definitely let me know thanks very much and thank you for joining us on this venture into Northlandia. To read the article for this week's column, as well as see photos, visit DuluthNewsTribune.com slash topics slash Northlandia. You can find all the episodes of Northlandia on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. If you or someone you know has a unique story that you believe you can have a place here in Northlandia, let us know by emailing Northlandia at DuluthNews.com. Join us again next week and discover the extraordinary stories that you just might miss if you're not in the right place at the right time, ready to step off the beaten path with no rush to return, here in Northlandia. Thank you.